Okay, uh, welcome back. So, where we left off last time is we have our board that generates without any matches. I can uh, swipe between two things that don't make a match and have them swipe back. I can swipe between two things that do make a match and have them disappear. So this is what we're going to work with today. I think I'm going to get an error. Yeah, I get a null reference exception error if I do that. But we're going to fix that a little bit later on with something called a state machine so that the player can't actually try to interact and break it when they shouldn't. But we will get to that soon. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is open up my board script here. So the last thing I did in my board script is I created a method to destroy matches at a specific place and a method to destroy all of the matches using that helper method. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to create a coroutine, which is something that kind of works in the background while the program might be doing other stuff, that is going to check to see if there are any places that are null, meaning any... Uh, places in the array that don't have a dot with them. So like if we're looking at our board here, the general logic behind what we want to do. Uh, if I find a match really quickly, there we go. Because once we have, uh, once we destroy the matches, we want to then go through and look at all of our spaces. And if we find a space that's null, then we want to take every space above that and move it down. So again, we find a space that's null, move every space down. And this can happen multiple times. So like here, this row would have one null space, and this row would have two null spaces. So all of these shift down one unit, but this one is going to have to shift down two units. Same thing here, this shifts down one. So we're going to create a coroutine. Oops. <laughs> Sorry. I don't want to make her open right now. Uh, we're going to have to create a coroutine that is going to work in the background. That's going to decrease our row. So, I'm going to create a, in the board class here, a private IEnumerator, and I'm going to call this decrease row coroutine, decrease row co. Okay, and we'll get this red line here if we don't have a return statement somewhere, just like we got a red line in matches at, because we have to have a return statement somewhere. So. Um, we'll deal with that return statement in just a second. Actually, let's deal with it now. You say yield return new wait for seconds, and I'll have it wait 0.4 seconds. Okay, you're gonna have that be at the bottom. Um, next, I'm gonna say int will count equals zero. This is going to be an integer that re represents however many spaces are empty on that particular column. Then I'm going to do my double for loops, which should be pretty sim pretty familiar to you by now. So we'll say for it's i is 0, i is less than width, i++, plus plus, and for j is 0, j is less than height, j++. Plus plus. semicolon there. Ah, okay. So we're going to check to see if it's null. So if all that ij is null, um, if we do get a null spot, then we're going to increase our null count. So null count plus plus. Okay, and uh, if it's not null, if the null count is already greater than zero, then we want to increase its row. We want to do all dots ij dot get component, and we want to get dot component dot row minus equals the null count. Um, <laughs> cool. Now, what we want to do is somewhere in here, because if we, like say in our first column, we have two null spaces, then we have to move stuff down. Uh, we want to reset that after every column. So 
at the end of the for loop for the first column, we're going to reset the null count to zero. Um, okay. So now I need to call this from somewhere. So I'm going to call it from my destroy matches coroutine. So in my destroy matches coroutine, I'm going to add decrease or not decrease row code. You can't just call it like that. You have to do start coroutine. And now we do decrease row co. Okay. So when our matches are destroyed, we should automatically try to find if anything should be decreased and then decrease it if it does need to be decreased. So let's pop back over here. Uh, give it a play when it's done compiling. And let's make a match. And there we go. Simple as that. Uh, let's make another one that's going to make things decrease. Uh, okay, that's a weird little glitch. Might as well fix that right now. Nope, hey, weird little glitch there too. So, um, what's happening there is the dots aren't necessarily setting themselves in the right places, so we're going to do a few different things here. Um, in the dot class, where we're taking a look at... Okay, so we're setting there... Um, all dots column row to this dot game object. We're setting it when we directly set the position. Let's do something different than that. So in the if statement, where we're checking to see if they need to move, and we're starting to lerp them towards their new position, uh, then I'm also going to make this lerp a little bit faster, just because I think it looks a little slow. I should do this by using an actual variable that I'm controlling from the editor instead of using a magic number like this, but bad habit. Okay. In this if statement here, I'm gonna say if board dot all dots column row is not equal to this dot game object. So I'm only going to call this if the position in column row isn't this game object, then I'm going to set it to be this game object. So there we go. That way I'm not going to be calling it a bunch of times. I'll only call it once and then reset it. And then also that way I don't have any weird thing. Oops, sorry. I don't want to do that. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to put it in the Y spot too for when we're changing vertically. And then I'll take this out. Okay, let's save that, pop back in Unity. Let's first see if we broke anything, which is always good to make sure we didn't break anything. Let's play. Do, do, do. Uh, okay, so match here, there we go. Match here, there we go. Just gonna play around a little bit, make sure that, oh, nope, there we go, super error. Ha ha, we're gonna have to fix that. All right, so let's find out what the issue is. Okay, so I think this is what the issue is. So we're setting its row to be lower. I want to right then also set its position to be null. So I want to do all dots by j is equal to null. So that that way when, it, um, when the next dot fills in, it should maintain its correct position in the array is what we're basing all of our movement and positions on, is its position in the array, that whole column row thing. So if I hit play here, let's try it out now. Okay, that one was fine. That one was fine. I'm not going to do anything. Um, that one was fine. Okay, so we have this kind of cascade thing, and we'll address that soon here. But that was fine, that was fine. Okay, I want to try it again, at least before I say that we fixed our issue. Um, here, here. And then when I do another match, that other match will go away too. Cool. Here, here. Um, okay, cool. 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 All right, it's working so far. Whew. 
Uh, okay, cool. So next time, uh, we'll talk about how we can make it so that uh, we're refilling spaces once we empty them. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. And I hope you have a wonderful day.